Good morning. I'm glad that you all made it in, despite all of the news warnings of inclement winter weather. Uh, it's so unfair. Like, Clay and the Cab County Schools both got a day off. Well, why spend a day off when you can spend the day on in biology? Right, so when I lived in Boston, it always snowed around this time. Ugh, why can't the rest of the country just get on the same page and just snow all of the time? Like, infinite snow days, you know, we don't want to come to school. Well, that would throw a lot of things out of whack. If it snowed all of the time, everywhere, it would mess up our food supply, wildlife, and the human population may even decline. What? Snow can't cause all of that. Well, we don't know that for sure. But what we do know is that living things all depend on each other and the environment to survive. The entire world only contains two things. Um, that doesn't sound right. Two things? Like, really? Yes. Living and non-living things. Non-living things like sunlight, soil, precipitation, we call those abiotic factors and they all affect biotic factors or living things like animals, plants, fungi, protists, and bacteria. People always forget those. Abiotic factors affect our ability to process energy, which affects our cells, and our cells help control how we respond to the environment, which could interrupt how we maintain a stable internal environment, which can affect how we grow and develop, and if we fail to grow and develop, we won't be able to reproduce in the- Okay, 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 man. You prove your point. I forgot everything is so ordered. Well, order is a big theme in this course and science altogether. Living things are ordered and living things in their environments are also ordered and organized. We call these the levels of ecological organization. You as an individual organism, you don't exist in this world alone. <laughs> You're surrounded by a lot of other humans. We're all the same species. This is called a population. But we know that the human population lives around other species. We can call all of these living things of different species together a community. And all of those living things are affected by the non-living things, abiotic factors. We call this an ecosystem. And you'll hear that word a lot during this standard. But depending on where you are, those abiotic factors can definitely be different. And we organize those into biomes, which come together to form our biosphere. Ah, there are definitely levels to this. Yes, sir. And even more levels within that. There are many biomes and their abiotic factors all influence the biotic factors that we find within each one. Would we expect to see white animals with lots of thick fur in a place where it's hot, dry, with no snow or barely any precipitation at all? No, they, they stick out like a sore thumb. Exactly. In a desert or savanna and other grasslands, we would expect to see biotic factors or living things that don't have thick fur or barely any fur at all. You'd see plants that have adapted to receiving little or no water at all. While those other animals that we talked about, they would probably be found in the Arctic tundra and taiga. In those extreme biomes, you'll find very little diversity amongst the flora and fauna. The who and what? Uh, just plants and animals, right? Yes. Ugh, too many names for stuff in this class. You're gonna have to get used to it. As we move towards the middle of the globe, you get a more moderate climate biomes like temperate and deciduous forests, which is actually what we live in. Um, none of this looks like a forest around here. Well, that's because our population, humans, have committed a lot of harmful actions that have impacted the environment. We'll talk about that later. But we all play a role in our ecosystems. Some are there to provide protection and nutrients. Some are there to take in these nutrients and provide nutrients for another organism. We call this role a niche. 
and your habitat determines your niche. So if that habitat were to change, well, that niche could easily change as well. Thanks. And right along the equator is the tropical rainforest with the warmest and humid temperature, even precipitation year round. And all of this allows for an extremely wide range of biotic factors. In fact, the tropical rainforest has the most biodiversity. Now I'm sure you've heard the word diversity before, but why is having biodiversity, a large variety of plants and animals, so important? Well, um, if you have a large variety of plants, well, that means they can support a large variety of animal life. Right, and not just animals, other things. Yeah, yeah. But how do plants support other living things? By giving us oxygen. Anything else? Uh, food. Exactly. And yeah, and even if you don't eat plants or you know vegetables that much, you eventually have to eat something that ate it. You're absolutely right. And we all take in and cycle that matter and energy back and forth because, sing it with me. All living things in the environment. What? What? That's crazy. I couldn't do you, You've got problems, man. You know that? Oh, you really meant sing, huh? Uh, yeah. You hear my tone? Uh, you, you were a little flat, actually. R raise the pitch just a tad. Just a tad. Excuse me? 